The draft is the beginning of certain players' futures with the Rams and the NFL. Things happen fast in the NFL, so one of the easiest ways to learn from others is reading and sometimes learning from others who did great things to give the Rams an edge. One of my favorite authors that really relates to the NFL, to football, is Jim Collins. One thing that's very interesting that he teaches is what he calls this flywheel, where if you do these actions and you just do them over and over again, that's gonna compound. Executing the flywheel, the first thing we're gonna to try to do with the Rams is identify and then select people to give the Rams an edge. That's with our second rounder, that's with our third rounder, fifth, sixth, seventh, that's with our college free agents. The very next thing on our flywheel is really, how do we immerse these individuals who give us an edge? How do we bring them into the building as individuals and work together symbiotically. The Rams, it's an organism. It's alive, but people are bringing it to life. So how do we help them realize that you're actually part of this ecosystem, this organism, to build this competent collective? We're just trying to engineer a dynamic, explosive, anti-fragile, competent football team that has a chance to compete for championships. It might be for the division, it might be for the conference, it might be for the Super Bowl. When the seas get uncalm, it's those moments is what the flywheel does. Is It's that map to go, oh, by the way, we're going to get this ship to shore. Hey, if we draft it, you want to come play for us? Oh, 100%. Oh, man, then we're going to do it. Going to the Rams. <laughs> the Los Angeles Rams select. We're about to draft. A lot of prep is done going into this set date in April. The element of building something to last, there's gonna be different phases that you're in. There's no secret, right? We, we were definitely in a phase where we had a very competent core growing into their prime together. I feel very comfortable about him if you would draft him. The week of the draft and the dialogue that comes with it looks a little different than the months that were preceding. You're able to be a bit more pointed in your questioning. You're going to get some specific responses that are really going to allow the fog to clear. Would you draft him late? Think five, six, seventh round. That guy has outstanding ball skills. I mean, some, some of the best of it in my area. Yeah, I think I've articulated if you draft him to go A to B fast, got a chance. The best part about the way in which Les leads this group is that he allows them to be themselves. He allows them to own their piece to the puzzle. And beyond that, it's up to each of us individually to uh, ensure that we come through. At the end of the day, once we identify these people, at some point, they'll be the Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Tyler Higby, you know, Aaron Donald, players like that who have been here a while. and They'll pass the torch, and, and the formula is always being able to pass the torch at the right times, and that's the, the art of the equation. We get talking about Stetson Ben. That's what I just said. Yeah. Right. Is that what you're about? He wants I'm to recommend him. some guys. I like them. Time will tell. LA is the home of epic storytelling. The Rams really lean into that opportunity. The draft film sets the tone for us, and we establish the tone and tenor of who we are and what we're made of. This year, a Hollywood blockbuster, celebrity-infused opportunity to tell our story. The more organic, the better. Cheech Marin, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul, Josh Dumel, as well as Diplo, all featured within the film, really bringing their respective labs to life. Fans expect for us to acknowledge in an honest and authentic way that last season was, was tough. 
And so you can't breed hope and optimism in this off season without addressing that head on. And so going back into the lab acknowledges there's work on our side to be done. How nice are to you? Meet you, Ryan? Pleasure to meet Big you. Big fan of you guys. Uh, Aaron. Coach, how you Good doing? You. Pleasure, man. Doing all right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm a big fan of you guys. Oh, uh, thank you, my enjoyed friend. Enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah. What a successful yeah. show that was, though. It's, I would equate it to yeah. going into yeah. a season. You know sure. you're good. Right. You just got to knock wood that right. everybody stays healthy. We got to yep. knock wood. People see this show. Right. Sure. Uh, is there a way to crack through the hundreds of shows out there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. how are you? Good. How about you? Good, man. I was asking the coach, I said, organizational needs or physical ability? I mean, what is it? It's you, always both. One lead it's a calculus or it, formula. It's a, it's a little like bit a, of a blend. A little bit of a blend, yeah. yeah. Hey, man. Yeah. Great meeting nice you. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Too. Thanks, yeah. Les. Thanks, Have a good season. Have a good year. There's nothing like being on set. There's a certain electricity that fills the air. This lab is as much a concept as a place to win the future you start by studying the current chemistry. What's awesome is we just had this conversation with Les and Sean about the formula for the draft. So good. While I'd love to be able to snap my fingers and say these things take no time to produce, these are months in the making. Locations upon locations that you're shooting at. And here we go, folks. Three, two. 16 go. Take one. Mark. At the end of the day, it's just you and the camera, right? You know? Nothing to be nervous about. And then, you know, a couple movie stars that I've seen in movies that I've watched when I was younger. Just not, nothing too much. Is it easy being an actor? Probably, probably easier than being a pro football player. The amount of lines you have to memorize. Yeah. I wanted to be a pro football player. <laughs> Three, two. A lab can be about many things or rest and recovery, all of which are vital to player performance. Sleep well, Jordan. Uh, First time. <laughs> Beginner's luck. I'm going, I'm going after he says, how did you, you get in here? Did you same deal go to Josh here? Easy enough. He said he played. He said he played. <laughs> I died. I'm not panicking. Like. And dialogue. Don't look at me. He said he played. JD, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, guys. Oh, okay. That's a wrap, folks. We get out here very safely. Do not interrupt, okay? The Los Angeles Rams has really invented this unique tent pole outside of a typical space and thinking about how we can draft and then take advantage of an incredible draft venue and a draft headquarters. It's differentiated, it's unexpected. And so for this third year, we've really built upon the last two years of setting up in a venue that's pretty fabulous, yet useful and functional. The Draft House, this year the Draft Lab, which is a really intimate experiential play, and it's combined with being able to get in front of fans and influencers and communities that are all in Los Angeles as we build upon the types of events that we do here. So in addition to this house serving partners, suite owners, influencers, and more, it's really about conducting business and making sure that we have the right setup for the NFL Draft. This is ready, I'm dropping this switch. We're gonna have that ready. I don't know where that one's going yet. Probably there, so we got plenty of space to bring it across. One, two. One, two. Three, four. Okay, so the one under the TV is one. Yes, and then five back in this room. I did that one. And that's what I'm trying to run out to now. For the draft house, we do a full extension of our network to this home. We've got a couple vendors that come in and assist us, so I'm making sure that they are able to function and work efficiently without hitting any snags, designing the network that we're gonna deploy. This is the one that's still Yeah, this one's gotta get transitioned. A lot of the challenges we run into are really just wiring configurations. There's a lot of wiring. We're wiring up a phone that connects over to a hub monitor, which you can plug into and get on our network. We have an NDI solution that's going into a decoder so that they can watch our draft board at each one of these stations. 
and then we connect that to our firewall and our switching network, which we deploy throughout the house to build our draft room as our primary location. Anytime we're leaving the comfort of our home network, there's added pressure, absolutely. If the internet were to go down and we were about to be on the clock and we're on our wireless backup, that certainly adds pressure. I'll be sitting here on eggshells for the duration of the draft, but at the same time, hopefully, I'm sitting in the back corner on my computer because if you don't see us running around, that means things were set up properly and we've prepared, tested, and implemented a successful event. have a sign that says the draft isn't till April. A lot of prep is done going into this set date. Pretty straightforward. For draft day, we got 11 picks currently. One in the second, two in the third. As we uh, get into maybe the black hole there in the fourth, we got about a 90 pick window in which we're just squatting right now. We talked about the life cycle with Sean. We talked about chapter one being hiring Sean and our first Super Bowl, losing it. We called chapter two, while trying to avenge that loss and getting there and actually winning it. And now we've nicknamed this chapter three of like, okay, we've been the two Super Bowls, what's next? All right, quick show of hands. How many people here have been with the Rams when we've picked 36 or higher? <laughs> yeah. I would have no clue what this organization would do if we actually had a first round pick. <laughs> the really interesting thing, right now we have 44 players on the roster. I think as we start to talk a little bit more about what day three looks like, only sign players you want to be a Ram. Don't just sign somebody because there's a roster target number. It's a lot of preparation for that moment and the beginning of there are certain players, right, futures with the Rams and the NFL. When we talk about the draft, we talk about dreaming big, talking about what players can become, what the team can become, it's the same on the business side. With what we've done with the draft lab, the draft has become an integral element where everybody is involved in the draft. Can't say enough about the work that you guys have done, and there's no year that we can take even more advantage of it better than this one, you know, to be able to get it figured out. And I, I give a ton of credit to you guys for making this smooth and seamless and having the communication and the clarity be what, what we're hunting up. I am so excited for what this team can become. I think some of you have heard me say this and it will sound crazy, but I promise you it's not. I am more excited about this team going into 2023 at this point in the year than I was for last year's team going into 2022. In about 11 picks. <laughs> no, we, he's saying we, there's a possibility we, we trade into the first round. I think it's fair to say that each trade up scenario isn't exactly the same. In trade up scenarios, discussing whether or not we move up for some of the players that we had bucketed and considered as potential impact ads. What do you really think it be, begins to make sense? I wonder if we call Washington. It'll, it has a way of working itself out. Yeah, it's that element that you got to prepare for. Is there anyone that you would trade up for? And then at that point, you got to wait and see how it unfolds. I was wondering if y'all were, uh, you want to come back to 36? Or are you going to pick? Hey, coach. Good, how are you? You know what, we, no, we wouldn't do the, the next year too. Uh, again, I don't mind talking about next year, but yeah, this year picks would be better. Is anyone within reach willing to dance with us in a trade? So that, that's the, the part that's fun because you just don't know. If, this, if these guys go, yeah. I've been talking with O'Connell, I think they're trying to get out. Would that still make the most sense for us? Hey, this is Les Rams. This is where it gets interesting. You allow the board to play itself out, at which point you're able to even see uh, with a little bit more 20-20 vision. And at that point in time, you're able to see it all 
uh, take shape in a way that uh, allows you to actually take action and feel like you have a firm grip on, on a lot of that movement. Damn, that really eliminates our abilities to go up then, doesn't it? I don't know what the world thinks we need. It seems like they say we need everything. The first round falling the way that it did, how tempting was it for you guys to discuss what to do versus the amount of needs that you had at that time? There were certain guys that we had discussed that, that would definitely merit that. Now how it unfolds and whether you can do that or not, but it didn't come to fruition. Yeah, what was interesting, no, no team really moved out of the first to the second. And I, I know there was probably a few other teams that were trying to get there, but for whatever reason this year, usually it happens once or twice late part of the first round, it didn't happen. I would just say the vision for how you use a guy and how it comes to life. I think we're playing it right. That, yeah. Pick 36, that's the base race, right? Trade somewhere. Hey, if we trade back and one of these guys is there, you know what I'm saying? But I, I mean, I know Ryan's like it. What you're gonna really do is work through the scenario if you trade back, there's an element of now you're collecting these draft picks. A lot of people are projecting him to go. There's no name to them. There's no genre, flavor, skill set. It's just, oh, that's a draft pick. That thing's very valuable. So on paper, collecting more just means you're going to get more shots. TCU may be the guy if you pick an OL in 36 day. Oh, I like this guy. As we're sitting there at 36, thinking to ourselves, all right, there's this bucket of a handful of players that we feel like could help make an impact and improve our roster. Let's begin the dialogue around whether or not those are moves we want to make. He may go first of these OL right now. This guy's a clinic in the run game, right? I know he can play the run. I know he can run block. We may prepare to the best of our abilities and say, sometimes they fall right to you and you go, wow, aren't we brilliant? We didn't make the trade up. A lot of times they'll go before you Got to get over the emotion and then sit there. Hey, you ready to pick or are you ready to trade back? So you're usually not just sitting still. So what's your gut tell you? We've done a lot of work on him. The only thing that I would say that I think is a good thing is this was your intuition right after last night. Let's make the pick. Let's get this guy on the call. Come on. Texas okay. Christian. Steve. Yeah. Hey, this is Les Snead, Los Angeles Rams. How you doing? Well, let me ask you this. You want to be a Los Angeles Ram if we draft you? Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, then. Well, I'm going to put you on the phone with your new head coach, Sean McVay. Congrats, my man. Congratulations. Hey, coach. How you doing, man? You excited? Hey, coach. I'm ready to go, coach. That's awesome. Are you with your family right now? Yes, sir. Oh, that's awesome. Well, congratulations. Got a lot of people excited. Can't wait to get to work with you, man. Enjoy this. What a, what an awesome day for you. I appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. He's emotional, man. I'm, Good I'm job. With the 36th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Steve Avila, guard, TCU. The neat thing is you do know he can play two guards in a center spot. That just makes you more valuable, and we'll try to figure out the best five and go from there. It off this time. Miller, touchdown, Horn Frogs! Let's go! At the end of the day, we have a lot of positions. Each time you go to pick, is there's probably a player at all of those positions available. And at that point, you go, okay, this player at this position fits our job description the most. And let's try to pick that player and then move on to the next pick. Let's start studying some of these guys that we think we really like. Ultimately, the goal at each pick is to select the best football player, and typically if you do that, it's going to work out for the best. That really is the North Star um, coming up on each pick point, is wanting to get that guy. If you were to say, like, actual positions that you think you really would want to address, are you still thinking, what do you, what do you think is... If one of those two were there, I'd say do that, just go back to back, I and mean, let's take the best player and don't feel needs. The day two selections, we wanted to ensure that we were leveling the competition up across our entire roster. Players that we firmly believe are in position to compete for starting roster spots. Whether it's edge, interior, it's, you know, it's, you know, it's like who complements a B in your mind and is also better for us long term. I think addressing the rusher, whoever you guys think is the best, is a smart thing. Let's go. Let's go with your gut. He's going to work his ass off and... He will? Yes. And that's your favorite? All right, let's do it. Let's go Tennessee.
Hello. Hey, Byron. Les Snead, Los Angeles Rams. Hey, you ever dreamed of playing in the NFL? Yes, sir. Do you want to play for yes, the Rams? Sir. Yes, sir. All right, man. We're going to draft you. The Los Angeles Rams select Byron Young. <laughs> Out of high school, didn't sign with anyone. Ended up working Dollar General, then walking on at a junior college in Georgia. And at the end of the day, he ends up getting to Tennessee. There's a story there that, wow, this guy was hungry. It's pressure to get in sex, Byron Young. Hey, that's what you do. Sean and Les balance each other out so well. What Les means to Sean throughout the regular season is what Sean means to Les throughout the lead up to the draft. My favorite football player is Wake Forest. I just don't know if this is where we pick him, but the way it's been going. Les, one thing I appreciate is the conviction on something. If all these guys go, who are you going to be the most pissed about? Oh, that's the right there. To watch the dynamic on draft day unfold, see Sean listening to Les, and to allow him the luxury of you know, some more confidence to, to pull triggers and to, to go ahead and make decisions a little bit more straightforward. You feel strongly about it. I'm with you 100%. So let me ask you this. What are we talking about then? If you feel that much love and so does he. He loves it. Right? I mean, this is a consistent buy-in. It's set up to be a super collaborative process. It's an open space <laughs> compared to kind of your traditional uh, draft room. And the room is really set up for exactly that. Is there anybody that would go with a, another player before Wake from the defensive side? No, not based on what we, what we use. So there's a unanimous buy-in on Wake. My thing is this, we're going to be furious if we lose this guy. But well, we've done a nice job adjusting all day, and it's worked out. You know what, let's just, let's end on a good note. Let's do it. Come on. Let's hey, Les. Hey, hey. Kobe. Hey, this is Les Snead, Los Angeles Rams. Yes, sir. Hey, if we draft you, you want to come play for us? Oh, 100%. Oh, man, then we're going to do it. <laughs> He's built similarly to Aaron Donald and has a, a very similar style game where there is a an element of, of get off right now in a short area that can give him an advantage on the OL and get it's an edge. Football, it's on the turf. Kobe Turner comes up with the pig skin and bounces his way to the sideline. The success for us is getting the draft board right. It's unreal how many little data points influence where a guy ends up on the draft board. If I were to go back and look at how many hours we spent just truly just looking at the board and, and tweaking it, being able to see that final result up on the screen and knowing how much work from our entire team went into putting that together was a really fulfilling moment. One of your scouts mentioned smart, tough, competitive, what you guys were aiming for here. How do each of these guys that you pick embody that? You know what's really cool is we've always tried to embody it. We sat down and had a conversation with Aaron Donald and, and we were talking about this is kind of the blueprint, play with some younger players, less experienced players on on defense per se. And you know what was awesome? He looked at you in the eye and said, here's the deal. I'm good. Just make sure they care. That, that's always resonated with me. But I think we've always tried to do that. If you want a simple algorithm of people you can bet on probably in life, then in on the football field or people who actually are passionate about doing what they do and then working to try to go be good or great, carve out a role. Be in the market for a quarterback tomorrow on day three, and is that kind of what the plan might have been going in, that Saturday would be the day you might do that? We're actually thinking we're going to be the first team ever to carry one quarterback the whole year, and that's it, Gary. Hey, no that's specialists on the Hill. roster right now. It's interesting. We're not going to punt. I don't know who's kicking off. Be fun to watch. It was a gap of 90 picks between our final third round selection and our first fifth round selection. Arizona, We're on the clock. It's a five minute clock, so it's going to go faster too. We were able to acquire some draft capital in between there to address some players and add some players that we had a lot of interest in. I can text Dave all right now. We're on the clock, so I need to call this cat. You guys want to do it? Do you want to do it? So it's it's 89 and 128 for 73. Okay, perfect. That's good. Thanks, man. Who are the top five players on the board? 
there was one player that really jumped out in comparison to the rest that we wanted to make sure we didn't lose out on. You have been on him for yes. Didn't we just come up for that? Try to come up for that guy. You have all. Yeah. Like if somehow it goes wrong, you yes. have all of this. But you'll, you'll win. You don't do that. No. Oh, I'm in agreement with that. They were asking about QBs early. We're past the strengths and weaknesses. This is a yes or no day. The part that's fun. If we stayed pat, we're picking this player. And then there's that element that you got to prepare for. Is there anyone that you would trade up for? You got to wait and see how it unfolds. Do any of those players? fall to within reach. The Jacksonville Jaguars have traded the 127th pick to the New Orleans Saints. So what do we want away? New Orleans is now on the clock. From this point forward, you just got to trust what you wrote. With the 127th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints have selected Jake Hayner, quarterback. Jake Hayner. We know what we want to do. We know what we're doing. Hey, Stetson, this is Les Snead, Los Angeles Rams. You want to come play quarterback for us? I would love to. All right, then. Hey, we're gonna uh, draft you and uh, with this pick, and I'm gonna hand you over to Coach McVeigh. Okay. All, All right, right yes, man. Stetson. Hey, Coach. And well, we're excited to get you fired up. We've got an all Georgia quarterback room now, so yeah. looking forward to getting you going, man. We've got a lot of respect for you as a player, and uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. All right, man. Congratulations. Yes, sir. Thank you. With the 128th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. The Los Angeles Rams select Stetson Bennett, quarterback, Georgia. Go oh, dogs. The amount of work that goes into a three-day culmination is a little bit crazy, but I think that's one of the fun things about this job is that you really are doing months and months of work to hone down what ultimately becomes the draft. See, I would always watch SEC defenders against Georgia's OL because they got a good OL and it's like damn this that's a bad day. everybody said he was the damn walk-on this guy's actually a weapon fires to the end zone touchdown one play man out there and it's caught Stetson Bennett touchdown Georgia he may be able to go touchdown Georgia No doubt. We got 161 to 189. Where are we at right now? <laughs> We've got six picks. It's gonna go fast when we start at 161. Like I think this guy would be really good for us, Les. We're gonna nail that dude. We're we're controlling the draft here soon. It's really cool how much expertise there is in the room. There's really not a single question that Les or Sean can ask that's not answered within five seconds. The decision making becomes super solid because of that collaboration. So how do you see Georgia fitting into the mix? If you said of all four of those corners, who's got the best ability? Les, this guy's the G. May hit some home runs. Yeah, I think I would rather have the home run here. Henny actually really loves him. He's been wanting to draft him. So this is a hell yes. What's your gut tell you? You didn't just do that. The amount of work you guys have put in at this point, trust that. Oh, we're on the clock? Yeah. It's all right. You got three minutes. Imagine if you had to make a play call. Oh. <laughs> you can be in this too long. This is a business and, right, young man has a skill. How can that skill be useful to us? But I do think in that moment, especially when you get on the phone, somewhere along the way, each of those young men started playing maybe flag football. Then eventually they, they put on shoulder pads and helmets and they were way bigger than their, probably the shoulder pads and helmets were probably taller than their body. And then next thing you know, they're in middle school, high school. You think of all the hours really that went into, okay, maybe, maybe actually getting that phone call. Nick, Warren, Davis. Hey Puka, Trevius. Hey, this is Les Snead with the Los Angeles Rams. Whenever they get that call, there is, a, there is an emotion there that they were trying to thread the needle of right being in the 0.001% of high school kids that play football to, to get that call and to get that opportunity. You've been watching the draft? All right, then well, here's what we're about to do. If we draft you right here, you wanna come play football with us? You wanna come be a Ram? You wanna come play for us? Going to the Rams. <laughs> Thank you.
the end of the day, we got jobs available, and there's a lot of young men who, this is their dream, to get a job in the NFL, and we'll try to do our part in aligning their dreams and our jobs. Hey, John. This is Les Snead, Los Angeles Rams. We're about to take you with the last pick of the draft here. So, you want to be a Ram? All right, ma'am. I think at the end of it all, you look at the group as a whole and you feel like we've certainly added quality depth to our roster while at the same time adding a number of players we feel like uh, can, you know, compete for not only starting spots, but also some significant rotational spots. I feel certainly confident that the level of competition throughout our roster has certainly been elevated. Fourteen's a lot. Is that how many we make? Yes, it is. Oh wait, that's the whole draft, right? Not today. We didn't. Have Eleven today. Good deal. We're a much more competitive football team by the nature of these 14 players. Our guys are doing a great job in the process of adding CFAs. And um, for the 44 guys that we've had in-house right now, we'll add to that and make sure that everybody that we're onboarding, we feel like has a legitimate chance to make our football team more competitive and a real chance to make the roster. As soon as the draft is over and you start that CFA process with the, you know, the agents and stuff, your phone's going, going nuts. That's how we roll. You know we're a young team. We got the lowest amount of people on the roster. I mean, we might have about 40 guys on the roster right now. So, I mean, chances that guys can come here and really compete is awesome. It's a chance to be a mini GM and take control because they give you that control of the process. There's a lot of decisions to be made in a short time frame. In some respects, I'd say I'd equate it to playing quarterback. You got to drop back in three seconds and be accurate with your decisions. Like, I, I like him, but I walked away going, this kid talks a lot correct. You know, he's going to get it. A lot of reps because we've only got those three spots at eight. Really, really love your client. We're trying to push as hard as we can. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, look at look at the roster. All right, yeah, appreciate you, Joe. Going ahead of L.A. I told you about that weather. Yeah, I ain't, never, ain't nothing better than playing in L.A. We spent a lot of time trying to negotiate truly the opportunity that the young man may have uh, coming to the Rams. The opportunity to make our team is real. I'm not. Have I ever be you? When money gets involved and decisions are made, it is it is hectic. And the phone calls. The best scenario and best opportunity is where you should go, man. It's not always about the money. And I think that's the interesting part for a lot of these young men is that how do you make a decision when you're 19, 20, 21 years old, somebody offers you $100,000 of guaranteed money and another team offers you 10 grand. The signing bonus is short money. You want to you be on somebody's active roster. Every year we've had somebody make the active roster. Hope we did a good job of completing passes in this free agency period and we're able to get some guys that will not only make the Rams and make our team better, but for those that don't, they get an opportunity to have careers in other places. Now that we're officially post-draft, we have to take account of what the Los Angeles Rams now have. 14 new additions in this draft, let alone the 26 undrafted free agents. we got a lot of work to do. Half of this roster is new. Sean McVay said it on draft day. He drafted an entire team. It's going to be a hot training camp. Yeah. It's going to be competitive. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be fun. A lot of those guys aren't going to make it here, but they're going to leave their mark here trying to make it here. And that's going to make the guys that do stay here a lot better for us. These guys have brought the right energy, both players and coaches, every single day. That excites me. They got to buy what you're selling. You're selling the go, right? Make you feel that burst you have. Put his ass on sports center. Make you think he's going deep. Hey, Ben, that's a hell of a job, Ben! Sean was always learning from the coaches. That's what struck me most about him. It's an amazing honor to be inducted into the cradle of coaches. It really means a lot to me. It's like you could tell immediately he was going to coach.